Hello guys, welcome to Alert Brains and the Fiction Session. I'm Masi Mutava, a literature student. So today we are going to review a funny book here. And it's called The Man in Green Daggeries. I'm using the front camera of my phone, so... The title is inverted, but it's the man in green daggeries. So basically, we will be reviewing the life of one person, but in two versions. This man here, the one that you can see on a side, side mirror of a car, it appears to be so. Who is sleeping and his face looks tired and he also looks like he's so sad or hungry. And we want to, to know how his life changed from this angry man to this man with green daggeries and why he's wearing those green daggeries. So his name is John Benjamin, as we will read from the story, and basically is the main character in the story. So this book is written by Nanga Bugwa, and basically he's giving a narration of a native life of an of a hawk of a Kenyan hawker or hawkers in Kenya. Those people on streets who sell basic things like second hand clothes or insecticides. I'm so sure the people who have been in Kenya or Kenyans have met hawkers along roads. Those people selling second hand clothes clothes and they really market them. You will be called from so far to, to buy a second-hand clothes or a cockroach medicine. They call it Dawayamende. I'm so sure we all know that. So that's the story that we're going to review today. So the narrator is a friend of John Benjamin here. And he introduces us by telling us that the man here was in love with a girl called Hilda. So they were in the same high school. But when they finished high school, John Benjamin did not qualify for the university, but Hilda did. So when Hilda qualified, she decided that she cannot love or she cannot date a man who was not qualified for the university. So she told him that whatever was happening was a joke and they have to end it there. So this man was really heartbroken and he changed to be a drunkard and a very dirty person who could not take care of himself. He stopped shaving his hair and he was so dirty to an extent that his father had to send him away from his house and had told him, you have to find another house, but not the house where his parents were living. And even at one point he went, to, he, he not even at one point. In most cases, he was being saved by our narrator from local alcohol or local beers where he, he would really get drunk until he could not know where to go or decide the direction to take. So one day when he's coming from the local brewers, he finds a dog that did not have any person to take care of. So he, he adopts that dog or he takes that dog to his place. So he, the dog gives birth to, reproduces five puppies, and he calls the dog Poppy. So one day when he's on the day-to-day -day life errands, he meets a man who is from that village, but he's a rich man, and he's called Marifoti. So Marifoti wants a, a, a puppy, but... Our character here, John Benjamin, does not sell puppies or he does not want to sell one of his puppies. So he tells him, no, I cannot sell you, sell to you one of the puppies. But then Mariforti asks another question. Can you make a kennel for, for the puppies if I get one? And John Benjamin gladly says yes. So he promises to take one to him. So that's how his life changes. Actually, that is the changing point of John Benjamin. So when he takes, 
when he takes the cannon to him, he starts receiving other orders and he also realizes that he can change his life from being a drunkard to an organized man. So that's how he starts his business of making kennels or dog houses. So one day when he's going to buy this green daggeries here, because now he has changed from a drunkard to a person who is making kennels and selling them, he has to buy clothes for his work. So he decides to buy these green daggeries and brown boots. And even one day when we, he will have many employees, that this is the uniform for their company. So when he goes to buy them, he meets a girl called Emma. So Emma sells to him these daggeries and she escorts her to the him to the bus stop. He escorts John Benjamin to the bus stop to go to the town because he has decided that now that he can do business, now that he can make dog houses, he can go to the town to find greener pastures. So she escorts him and when She's about to go back. John Benjamin gives her 50 bob shillings. And that's how their love begins. Funny, right? It's a funny story for a beginning of a, of a love issue. So after giving her the 50 shillings, that's how they, they fall in love. And that's how they begin communicating more often. So when John Benjamin goes to, ta to town or leaves the village to go to the town, his life changes. So he begins making more kennels and receiving more orders until one day he goes to, he's invited to a particular TV channel to give a story about his history and to, to educate the youths on how they can change their lives or how they can become entrepreneurs or even better, how, can, how they can leave drugs and change their lives positively. So in that TV channel, he has actually marketed his business and he begins receiving even more orders. So that's how his life changes from that angry and dark face to an enlightened man. Until at the end of the story, he marries Emma, he officially marries Emma, and the author takes us to a, a flashback where at one point John Benjamin went attended a wedding in the village and she, he saw that the, the bride was so beautiful and told her, you know your dress is so beautiful, I would really want to have a white wedding like you have. And the bride told him, yes you can. But the other villagers who saw him told him he was so dirty and he was not supposed to be associated with the with the bride so he had to leave they even accused him of having intentions to steal the wedding cake so you can imagine how he felt when at one point he had the opportunity to have a white wedding with emma so the story is so interesting because it gives the real life of orcas for example the author the narrator begins by asking the readers now us, where were where his story had reached before they were rudely interrupted by National Council Ascaris. So basically when Orcas see National Council Ascaris, they have to pack their things in a rush and leave before the Ascaris see them to request for taxes or for money because they are not insured and they do not have a formal way of paying the taxes. So they have to run. And another thing is that before any chapter begins, the narrator will give us an overview of how them or the hawkers live. For example, they have to go by, they have to go without lunch. They just have the breakfast and the supper so they do not have enough money for buying lunch and in other cases they have to stay alert whenever one sees their scaries they have to shout to the others so that they can pack their things and go 
in other cases they do not sell even one of their items so that's how they live that's how they survive and that's where john benjamin this man here comes from he was selling cockroach insecticide or just insecticide and the narrator tells us that they had actually formed a song such that when when the narrator finished marketing his shakara or second hand clothes then it was john benjamin's turn to invite other customers to buy the insect said and he even tells us that the secretaries or the young girls who are working as secretaries in particular offices could not buy from them because in most cases they were with their boyfriends who were rich but after they had escorted their boyfriends to far distances they would come back to buy those insecticides or dawayamende i'm so sure the kenyans know the story about this so that's a story of orcas and that's how orcas survived and now seeing a man who comes from being a orca to an entrepreneur and to a land owner and marrying is a huge story that we all would want to know how he changed all that he, before he changed he was he was a person who even children did not want to be associated with for example in one case the narrator went with john benjamin to his own house and the girl the narrator's girl or young daughter could not greet him and you know that's disrespect and parents believe that you should greet an older person even when they are dirty so the girl ran to her mother say shouting i cannot greet him because he is so dirty he stinks and the mother really beat the daughter because she was being disrespectful and forced her to go and greet the man but the girl could not she actually cried until the father came to save her but that was the first time the second time john benjamin was coming to the house the girl went willingly and greeted the man so you can see the comparison between the two incidences the two people who are in different version but it's just one person and then lastly the story is about love issues so this man was in love with hilda when they were in high school because they were good both of them were good performers but when they finished and john benjamin who was referred who was called kemang actually he changed his name when he became rich that's when he decided to call himself john benjamin so when he did not qualify to to go to the university Hilda denied him and told him that they can no longer be in love but when he became rich and he could be seen on newspapers in tv channels Hilda came to him and told him you know what we can be in love with each other again but the man had already got another girlfriend that is Emma whom she whom he will eventually marry so yeah it's a really nice book and it does not use a complicated language actually anyone reading this will know the life of a native kenyan and hawkers to be specific thank you for watching subscribe to this channel comment about this book if you've ever read it or if you would want to read it and also suggest any other book that you want me to review thank you for watching and